Hello and welcome to Inventing Civilization, the YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the history of political thought and philosophy. In this episode, Marsilius of Padua. Marsilius, or Marsilio if you prefer, was born in Padua in 1280. He was an Italian political philosopher with several important treatises to his name. The most famous is Defensor Pacis, but he also wrote De Translazione Imperi and The Defensor Minor. In these works, Marsilius explored the relationship between the church and the state. Now, this was a very pressing issue at the time, as various German king emperors and popes found little common ground on the question of who should rule the Holy Roman Empire. An odd confederation of a state that roughly covered what is now the northern half of Italy, the Alpine nations, Germany and the Low Countries. During Marsilius's lifetime, the issue reached boiling point in a power struggle between King Ludwig IV of Bavaria and Pope John XXII. Marsilius sided firmly with King Ludwig IV, and he argued in favour of secularism. So let's have a look at exactly what that entailed. Marsilius was a follower of Aristotle, and like Aristotle, he believed the state existed for the purpose of a good life. This was the general idea that the state has a regulative function to protect the common good, allowing each citizen to live well and realise his potential. Now, for the state to maintain peace and order, it would have to have some sort of coercive authority. And in order for that to be fair and just, the authority and the laws would have to come from the people themselves. So Marsilius argued that the citizens should elect their leaders and have a say in lawmaking. Rule and lawmaking by the many is, Marsilius posited, more effective in keeping the peace than rule and lawmaking by the few. After all, when individuals come together to exchange views, they must accommodate other opinions, leading to compromise that is conducive to the common good. Now, so far, none of this really is particularly controversial. The controversy was inspired by Marsilius's view on the role of the Church in all of this. You see, in the eyes of the Church, the Pope stood above kings and emperors in a great hierarchy ranging from lowly peasants at the bottom to God himself all the way at the top. But Marsilius disagreed. Marsilius explained to great length and detail how the Christianization of the Roman Empire had produced a corrupted church that, when the empire fell, had moved to take its place as the only authority that could hold sway over a heavily fragmented Europe. In doing so, the church had placed itself above secular authorities, but this evolution, according to Marsilius, was a perversion. According to Marsilius, the leaders of the Church had completely misunderstood the New Testament. He argued Jesus Christ had forbidden his apostles and disciples from exercising any worldly rule. This meant the Church simply could not be a political force. According to Marsilius, Christ had meant his Church to be a congregation only, a collective of the faithful where the clergy teach but hold no authority or coercive power over anyone. Furthermore, Marsilius posited that Christians were subject to secular rulers on earth. He based this chiefly on two things. One, Christ's remark that we must render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And two, Christ's acknowledgement and acceptance of the secular authority over him by Pontius Pilate. All of this meant that the church had to pay taxes as well as adhere to judgments of civil courts, both of which the church had always been exempted from. Marsilius also showed remarkable disdain for the office of the Pope and specifically its power. The powers of the Pope consisted of several different aspects, such as, for example, the authority to interpret scripture, to summon general councils of the church, to excommunicate any ruler and his entire country, to appoint all church offices in the world, and to make decisions about the defining characteristics of the Catholic faith. To Marsilius, all these powers were illegitimate. Marsilius believed that the power of the Church should lie with a council composed of all Christians, not with the Pope. So, in conclusion, Marsilius analyzed the example set by Jesus Christ and his disciples 
and argued the church was wrong to adopt a hierarchical structure that wielded political power. He thought Christians should once again submit themselves to secular rule, while keeping their loose collective of a church firmly out of earthly politics. Now, there exist in modern times roughly two different ways of looking at Marsilius' works. And there has, particularly in the English-speaking world, been a strong tendency to look at Marsilius through the rearview mirror and see in him a proponent of secular republicanism. But that's probably off the mark somewhat. European scholars, on the other hand, have traditionally taken a different view. They point out that in his writings, Marsilius is sympathetic to monarchy and that the Italian city-states of his time existed in a larger imperial context that Marsilius himself supported. If you actually examine his writings, the essence of what Marsilius did was to combine the insight of Aristotle with his own scathing judgment on the moral implosion of the church from its once pure origins. And while that doesn't really constitute a pioneering thesis on the much more modern notion of secular republicanism, it still inspired later thinkers who did explore those ideas. So, Marsilius may not have had modern secular republics in mind when he wrote the Defensor Pacis, but his works nevertheless were crucial early steps on the very long road to get us there. Well, that concludes this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. As ever, if you'd like to learn more or cite this particular video, please check the description box below. For now, though, I want to thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.